I've been trying to put my old coconut to some news and crack the mystery of what makes hit tracks, well, hit. At first, I thought maybe it's all about copying what's already popular, but that was like trying to surf on a pancake. It is just not happening. Take Anima for instance. There were more anime imitators than grains of sand on the beach. But did any of them hit the same level of fame? Now they flop like a peanut jelly bread doing a triple spin onto the kitchen floor. But here is the punchline, my baby producers. The secret sauce for making hit tracks is... Making trance music. <laughs> Said no one ever. Although that could have been quite a plot twist. This was just my way of winking at all the folks who mimified my this is not trans meltdown last week. Alright, alright, brace yourselves. Cause here comes the zinger. The common ingredient was bring the drum rolls back. Nostalgia. This is nostalgia. This too. And this also nostalgia. It is easier said than done though. So how do you create nostalgia? Before we start, I want to put a disclaimer. Recreating famous tracks is one of the best ways to learn and improve your production skills. Nothing wrong with it. One of the devious ways of getting nostalgic feeling is using similar interval relationship of like a child song because it takes you immediately to your childhood before you even realize it. Now, I have a very good example for this and it's from the iconic song somebody that I used to know from Gotya and Kimra. And when I realized this, it really ruined the song for me. It will probably ruin it for you as well. I wanted to give you a warning before we start. Here I'm not talking about taking the same phrases of the melody, but how the melody progress, how intervals are very similar. This is an exaggerated example, so you don't need to make it this obvious. And you don't need to use children's song either. You can use old pop music or old techno music so that you can somehow remind listeners the same feelings that they had very many years before. Create a nostalgia. If you want to try my courses, presets and sample packs, this is the best time of the year. We have up to 40% discount on Mercurial Tones. Take a look at it. I'm sure you will find something that you will enjoy. No running from this one. If you ever use cassette player, speed of the electric motor goes faster and slower time to time, creates this pitch wobble effect. Many people has that effect allocated to like old school nostalgic sounds just because of tape pitch wobble. Of course, you don't need a tape for that. You can create the wobble in anywhere. And let me show you the effect. This is my track directions I just released this Friday. And at the break, I have this vintage synthesizer. Yeah, it may be vintage a little bit, but it's not vintage enough. The way you create this wobble effect is you just take any LFO that you have and put it onto your fine tuning. So your tuning goes up and down all the time and creates this wobble. Let's start with a slower wobble here. Right? But some cases you may want to go really crappy cassette player. So in that case, you take a faster LFO, 116 here, and the same idea, put it here. Listen now. Oh my god, we have a vintage synthesizer. It's wobbling really fast, gives this really unstable feeling, especially when you go a bit darker. And then what you do, you couple this one with wobble delay. I'm just using a preset over here. And listen to this now. we have that nostalgia feeling. If you're enjoying the video, please consider like and subscribe. It really helps a ton. While you are talking about tapes, one thing that you have to understand is when you're listening music with the tape, nothing is like original. The tape has its own saturation, tape would have its own frequency response, and most importantly, the tape had 
where the information is read is misaligned, dirty, is in bad condition. So you always get this type of character out of the tape. The tape will have different frequency response curves. This is one of the most common ones. You will have this kind of weird bumps on your low end, drop on your super highs. And I remember that we would also have a bit like tape excitation right before the drop like this, right? And let me show you what this means in modern production. I have these beautiful vocals. Breathless body diamond. For my taste, they are a bit flat. They are cool, but flat. What you do? Emulate that aged tape. The simplest way of doing is actually just adding an overdrive right on the mids. And on top of that, very typical tape sound, roll off on both sides and a little bit excitement before the roll off as well. They can be much more complicated than this, but I'm simplifying. Now without tape EQ and distortion. Breathless body. With distortion and EQ. Breathless body. It's this Third thing is this warmth without breathless body with breathless body. You can emulate this with tape plugins and so on, but I want to show you where it comes from because oftentimes you really don't need expensive tape plugins to get this warm sound out of it. And look how much this adds to the synth that we had before. Breathless. We are suddenly drowning in nostalgia. Another very common thing with nostalgic instruments is they were pretty simple. For example, if you take the vintage analog synthesizers, they were quite straightforward. At first sight, it may look complicated, but it's just oscillators, envelopes, and a couple of them modulators, and that's it. Hence, the sounds from that area was quite simple, but quite warm. And the way to enhance this one is coupling this vintage sound together with familiar phrases. Listen to Blinding Lights. Do you hear the sound? It is super simple. Here I'm using the emulation of Pro 1. Right? It is just two sliders, no filters, no nothing whatsoever, together with a big reverb. Remember how we make it warmer? Let's add that high end roll off. And then couple it with the chorus. Immediately we are there. And for casual listeners, this is vintage analog synthesizers. But listen to this now. You probably hear this phrase in tons of different tracks. We are so familiar with it, it immediately creates this nostalgia because of the sound and phrase combination. You don't need to make it this obvious though. For example, in my track at the chorus, I just want to make it a bit more euphoric. And simple ways to do it, taking a synth sound like this, emulating that unlock synthesizer sound with serum and pigments. And again, we are adding wobbles and this type of EQ and we got this. How this adds this excitement and nostalgia. Beautiful. Of course, the chord progression is one of the key elements of making nostalgic track. And there are a couple of things that you can do here. For example, let's say we are in A minor and making a chord progression. It is a melancholy chord progression. I mean, it's kind of a nostalgic, but it's not that much. And here's a trick that you can utilize. We have, for example, here D minor. What you do is do a major minor switch. In this case, I'm switching D minor to D major. Listen to this now. Right there. single not change over here introduce really this weirdness the old school feel kind of and you can use different iterations of this idea in different chord progression the one that works for techno will be for example we can take just a simple d minor instead of going to the major this time we are staying in the overall a minor key in this way we are going down half key and doing a voice leading in the middle It feels very nostalgic. It's like pure dreaminess, I will say. Very cool. 
you want to learn more about real music production, take a look at here. I have more videos there.